uh, our, pri our primary goal is to uh, increase the investment in and adoption of open infrastructure to enhance equity in research and also remove the barriers to participation. And one of the things that we believe in is that for open knowledge to flourish, our systems need to be similarly uh, designed and our work seeks to enhance a, a, a world where open infrastructure is the default in research and scholarship. Yeah. So in terms of our approach, we are a research-driven organization and we look to ensure that uh, this research-driven approach guides our strategies and also uh, the consequent actions to in increase adoption and investment in open infrastructure. We provide resources and analysis to help funders and budget holders assess, evaluate, and make decisions about open infrastructure and we pilot solutions and coordinate stakeholders to increase the sustainability of the sector to further a shared agenda for making open infrastructure the default in research. So in practice, what does this look like? So there are three main pillars to the work of investment, uh, of, of investing in open infrastructure. Number one would be the 2024 fund. So the 2024 fund is a different initiative to the Open Infrastructure Fund, which is the, the, the main reason for this call today. But this is a fund that we are looking to build out for uh, starting next year, where we are going to be kind of channeling funds to support the, the adoption uh, and building a, a, of open infrastructure and making sure that the systems are healthy, resilient, and sustainable. And then also we have a component called the data room, which is how do we now develop tools to allow decision makers to enhance their, their, their processes. So here we have uh, uh, tools like the catalog of open infrastructure services, uh, a number of actionable reports and dashboards to guide investment in open infrastructure. And we also have the final component would be, would be in terms of strategic support which is where we leverage on targeted and grant funded engagements to provide uh, to, to providers, funders and institutions to implement open infrastructure research uh, and build the resilience and sustainability of the knowledge sector. So to the meat and bones of, of this discussion today, which is the, the open infrastructure fund. So the open infrastructure fund Previously, it was uh, going by the collective funding pilot. It aims to strengthen the sustainability and increase the resilience uh, of open infrastructure that, that underpins research and knowledge creation. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we are looking at developing a world where open infrastructure is the default in research and scholarship and making sure that these systems are interoperable. So in terms of the overview of the fund itself, there are three main buckets that we are looking at funding. One would be capacity building, the other would be strengthening community governance, and the third would be critical shared infrastructure. So just a little bit of context into how we arrived at, at these three buckets. Uh, Last year, when we had uh, uh, an event called the Funders Summit, we had a participatory kind of budgeting exercise. And we had six different budget bu buckets that we were looking to finance. And out of that, through like also involvement in the community and kind of like design service that we've been running, we were actually able to kind of zone in on these three uh, buckets as the ones that were most critical. So this is, it was a collective and a participatory process that actually arrived at these three buckets. And in terms of distribution of of the of 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 where the the funding is applicable to the funding is open to any organization or any individual in the world but what we are doing is also to break down those barriers to equity and access we are influencing 60 percent of the funds for individuals organizations and projects in low and middle income economies as defined by by the world bank if you were to visit the 
IOI page where we have the collective fund information. You also have more information about the, the definitions that we used that I've just referenced. And in terms of the level of funding, we are looking at uh, funding of between 5,000 to 25,000 uh, US dollars. And for the duration of the award, we are looking at uh, supporting these projects over a period of two years starting from between November 1st and December 31st uh, this year. And uh, the deadline for applications is July the 31st, uh, 2023. So still over just over a month left to apply for this. So in terms of the, the three buckets that I already mentioned in terms of the funding areas. So the first one would be in terms of capacity building. And here we are looking at improving the technical reliability and security of open infrastructure services. So one of the things that I'd like to just point out as a, as a, as a disclaimer is this is meant as a guide, but uh, it, it does not mean that the three kind of areas that we have here are the only ones that uh, can be funded according to to capacity building, same applies to critical shared infrastructure, same applies to governance. So here we are looking at, for example, activities like creating and updating documentation to make it easier to onboard new contributors, uh, maintainers, and users. We are looking at training institutional staff and users on implementing and, and using a new version of infrastructure. And we're also looking at, for example, organizing events to strengthen relationships slash networks among contributors, maintainers, and or user communities. So this is just, these are just sample activities that could be included under the capacity building uh, uh, area. Next, we have strengthening community governance. And here we are looking at these developing systems that ensure that infrastructure services act in accordance with these values of openness, transparency, and, and accountability. So here, once again, we also have a number of different uh, activities. Uh, for example, this could include uh, organizing community workshops to discuss governance needs and where applicable also redesign these governance structures. We are also looking at uh, potentially like convening a dedicated committee or working group of key stakeholders to lead work on diversifying governance uh, and also working to improve governance processes. For example, uh, reviewing and evolving bylaws and other policies to also now cater to the fact that also things within the space are changing so much. And uh, finally, in terms of the, the last kind of funding area that we have is critical shared infrastructure. So one of the things that I'd also want to point out is when you talk about critical shared infrastructure, this is also very contextual, depending on which community you are looking at and what is important to that particular community. So we also are, are, are very flexible and depending on the justification for this in the project proposal, we would be very open to different ideas. But here we are looking at efforts that would push people to directly collaborate and work across existing systems. So also when you're referencing back to the FAIR principles, when you talk about the aspect of interoperability, I think that also applies directly to this. And for example, uh, one of the efforts that uh, could be here would be, for example, sharing the technical development across two or more open infrastructure teams to enhance interoperability and also maybe it could be adaptation and customization of existing infrastructure services to serve a local community's needs. For example, this could be language localization because for the most part, uh, particularly when you're looking at uh, communities uh, in Africa, Latin America, Asia, there might be a need for us to translate into different, different languages. So, in terms of uh, the geographical focus, one of the things that I mentioned is we are investing 60% of the total funds. So given the fact that the fund itself is around 130,000 US dollars, so around 78,000 
uh, dollars is going to be fenced for individuals and organizations working in low and middle income economies. And uh, also one of the things that I would want to point out, for example, is that if you're working in, let's say, the global north, but are supporting communities uh, in the global south, then you can also be able to just uh, justify that in your application. And then also we are applying for, we are accepting applications both in, in English and in Spanish. Uh, and then also in terms of the application process, so you must apply through the open review portal. So we suggest uh, registering for an account as soon as possible. The reason for this is that sometimes uh, approval of the account might take up to 24 hours. So the sooner you actually set up the, the account on, on open review, the, the, the better it is. Uh, and also one of the important things to note here is that in the in the spirit of transparency, uh, all of the applications that we receive are going to be openly reviewed. So by submitting to an, uh, an application, you agree that your proposal will be accessible and publicly reviewed. And then also we have a number of, of templates for drafting the proposals that are available on our website. Uh, the link is here. So also you can be able to access this through the, the shared uh, notes document uh, that is in the chat. And uh, we will be sharing a guide for applicants and continue to expand also on the frequently asked questions on the website. So in terms of the key dates uh, to note for this particular process, uh, we already are, are, are accepting our applications up to the 31st of, of July. And also we have these office hours sessions. Uh, we had one last week and we're also going to have another one on July the 6th. And then the deadline for proposals is midnight of, uh, of July 31st, uh, UTC. And then by September, we do expect that uh, we will be able to get back to all of the people who have applied. But this might be subject to change also depending on, on the volume of applications that we receive, which means that uh, coming up with the final decisions might take a long time, a longer time. And also from November the 1st, we expect now to start kind of transfer of the funds to the selected organizations. Uh, and this is pending due diligence and also just uh, paperwork. So in terms of uh, the evaluation criteria, so how are we going to choose uh, the, the, the proposals to fund? Now, one of the things is that they need to be in alignment with the three funding areas. So critical shared infrastructure, governance, and also capacity building, and also with IOI's goal to further equitable access and participation in research. So there's a number of different things that I'd like to point out here is that the proposal should articulate uh, clear objectives for the proposed work that are aligned with the funding priorities of this call. And then the proposal should also outline specific activities to work and involve users, supporters, and other projects communities in the proposed work. And then uh, the proposed work should be open. It should, uh, it should work with uh, not-for-profit and non-commercial platforms and services, employ open standards and protocols, and encourage use and reuse of content, data, and underlying code with minimal restrictions. So also, when you uh, call back to the FAIR principles, when you talk about reusability, uh, I think that's a key point. Then the other one also would be that the proposal should present actions and strategies should to reduce marginalization and further equitable access and participation in research. As I referenced earlier, we are looking at breaking down the barriers uh, to research and we're also looking at how do people who are also typically uh, at the periphery of some of these discussions uh, and opportunities to get uh, the chance. Then also we are looking at another uh, evaluation criteria, which would be the evidence of an unmet need. So we are looking at also funding 
areas that typically would not be able to get funding or maybe the hardwares for them to get funding are, are, are very, very difficult. So number one, the applicant should convey the need for the project. Uh, what's the utility of the initiative that you would want to be funded? And also that they demonstrate that the, the, the funding for this type of work is, is either scarce or neglected or very difficult to attain. And then the other one would also be in terms of the feasibility and, and readiness. So the objectives of the product project are feasible within the, the period of time. When we're talking about two years of the funding cycle uh, 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 and the budget. And also the applicant should uh, show careful and thorough understanding of the skills and resources needed to cater for potential challenges and just execution. So uh, in terms of reporting and progress, so one of the things that we kind of want to deviate from is the fact that typically like a lot of these uh, grant calls have very cumbersome uh, reporting processes. Uh, so one of the things that we would want to do is we are taking an approach where we are going to have uh, regular inter in calls, 45 minute calls at six month intervals between the successful applicants and the IOI team to report on progress. And the thing that we will do is when we're having these calls, uh, particularly on video calls, we are going to make sure that uh, they are transcripted automatically. And that is also going to serve as the is the record for that particular kind of due diligence check. And also these calls, we are looking at them as an opportunity for the applicants to also surface any challenges or deviations that they may have in regards to the original project proposal that uh, got the funding. So yeah, thank you for the listening to this presentation. Uh, in case you have any questions, uh, my contact is here. Same for my colleague, Amy. If you have questions, you can be able to ask us uh, and also you can be able to spread the word. But for now, let me pause here and then uh, take uh, maybe some questions that uh, might be on the shared document. But also if you want to just ask a question, you can also be able to raise your hand and we'll give you the opportunity to ask. So thank you. Thanks, Jerry. Um, I'm seeing one question here on the shared notes document, so maybe we'll start there. But as Jerry was mentioning, um, if, if we have a relatively small call here, if you just wanna kind of raise your hand and then mute and ask directly, that's also completely fine. So uh, the question here is, is there a link between the funding pilot and the, uh, the catalog of open infrastructure services as an evidence of alignment? Okay. Thank you for, for that question. In terms of the, the alignment between uh, COIS and, uh, and the funding core, I would not say that uh, there's a direct linkage to that because uh, for this particular call for proposals, we are looking at, at funding initiatives that uh, maybe, for example, have an, an, an unmet need or have difficulties in accessing funding. In terms of the call, the, the catalog of open infrastructure, that's an IOI service that we are looking at maybe eliminating the, the barrier, the information asymmetries in terms of like the funding opportunities and also the funding resources that are available within the open infrastructure space. So maybe perhaps if you would be interested in kind of uh, playing a part or maybe being involved in the catalog of open infrastructure services, Maybe you can let us know and maybe we can be able to uh, maybe have a separate call where we can also be able to look at potential collaboration on the next iteration of the catalog of open infrastructure services. It's now a, a prototype, but we are looking at kind of refining it and developing it further. But of course, with uh, the, the input of the community. So any questions or any kind of additional uh, conversations about catalog of infrastructure, we'd be happy to do that on a separate call. Thank Thanks, you. Jerry. Thank you very much. Uh, I just... Yes, yes. 
I'd just like to add on to that question in terms of the evidence for alignment, because knowing that we did actually mention the catalog specifically within the call for proposal, um, the idea is that I think I think while Jerry is like absolutely spot on in terms of the fact that there is no direct link between the kind of two projects, if you will, within IOI at the moment, um, the the way that we um, thought about, you know, transformative influence and openness within COIS is a useful reference as you come to think about the openness aspect of your project in terms of whether or not you're maybe working with um, open and non-commercial, not-for-profit uh, infrastructures, but also thinking about there is a question within the application form that asks you in terms of how, you know, the uh, project will meet the needs of user and, and contributor communities. COIS and the frame that we've built there in terms of thinking about how those things could be met from you know, a governance to an openness perspective could be helpful guidance as to how you can go around thinking about that question. Um, so, so thanks for that question. And I hope I kind of added a little bit more detail that might be helpful there. But I'm also like right now thinking out loud, thinking to add that into the guidance for applicants as well as, as, um, as the next step that you could, you could then go back and refer to what I've just said as well. So thank you for that. Thank you, Emmy, uh, for the additional clarification. Uh, any other questions that are there? I'm looking at the document. Uh, we still only have one question. Any other direct questions that maybe we may have here uh, in the in the meeting itself? We'd be happy to take those. I guess it seems maybe uh, more questions. If no questions are arising immediately, uh, then once again, you can be able to reference our emails that are included in the presentation in the shared notes document. We'd be happy to answer any questions. And also as you begin the process of applying, if you get across maybe any challenges that you may be facing, also, we are here, just send us an email and we'd be happy to support you best way that we can be able to do that. Oh, no worries, Thomas. This is, is fully understandable. Sometimes the, the, the questions <laughs> come after the call is, is done. So I'm on the same boat sometimes. So I, I fully relate. But anyway, uh, thank you guys for attending this call. It's been a, a pleasure to facilitate this. Uh, once again, uh, if you have any questions, reach out to us. Also share this call to other communities, other people who you feel may benefit from this uh, from this uh, particular fund. And yes, we, we keep engaging. So thank you. And I wish you all a, a lovely day ahead. <laughs>